this has been overdue for quite a while so let's just get started i have with me here these three latest iem from kz one of them being kz gorilla kz castor harman version and of course the higher version of kz which is kz as24 as you can see here kz gorilla is a 12 us dollar iem constructed of entirely of metal cast metal as you can see here reminds me a lot to the similarity almost identical to kz dfi which i reviewed and uh, recently and it is uh, the difference is that it is a dual hybrid balance amateur with 10 mm single dynamic driver inside the diaphragm itself being constructed of soon dd whatever it is with a single ba of 395 the impedance rating for this Krila is rated at anywhere from 28 to 38 ohm and the reason for that is that because this is a tunable switch version as you can see here much similar to kz dfi okay the cable itself is a standard affair from kz being a budget price at 12 us dollar so you're just going to get the standard issue cable 3.5 mm and the tips the good thing about it is that it comes also in kz silicon and foam tips which i use i prefer the foam tips definitely a lot more over the silicon tips and as noted earlier it also offer this deep tuning switches it is entirely possible to have 16 different type of configuration using these deep switches all right so moving on to the next one this is a uh, kz castor and the one that i have in my hand right now is silver colored so this is the harman version the construction itself is uh, made of uh, slightly different from this uh, kz krila it is uh, aluminium face plate with resin you can actually see the drivers inside here and what's inside is a dual dynamic driver so you have the 8 mm and 10 mm stacked together like that and the impedance rating itself is anywhere from 31 to 35 ohm so it's kind of a bit higher than kz krila from the starting point but pretty much uh, similar the sensitivity itself also variable anywhere from 105 to 108 db of sensitivity and again you get the same cable as well okay the tips also pretty much similar to krila and it also has this uh, deep tuning switches here okay so the next one this much bigger iem which is the higher end model uh, kz as24 and as you can see here it is quite big <laughs> the reason it's so big is because this is a 12 balance amateur per side yes there's 12 driver inside here okay a mix of different balance amateur which you can check on kz side if you want to know what are they surprisingly despite all that configuration the impedance rating is the lowest among all three of them at just 20 ohm okay starting with kz krila price at 12 us dollar i must mention that first of all the tuning configuration which i have set for this krila for the entirety of my review is that i use this uh, tuning switch here set at off 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 and on so meaning to say that i only have the option number four being turned on the rest of it being switched off just focusing on upper frequency and letting the rest of the frequency being all flat as neutral as possible you can actually play with the setting 16 of them i have spent quite a bit of time trying a few and i have stopped at eight because i always come back with the off 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 on setting pretty much similar to what i had in my kz dfi which i have reviewed much earlier okay so talking about driving this kz krila this is very easy to drive even when attached to my sony xperia phone here under one vrms it was already great sounding right and it gets better especially when attached to my sony pcm d100 here my favorite depth and also this uh, hebe fc6 and ibaso dc04 pro all right so i must say that moving on to not with all right it depends on the type of source which you attach them to okay if you attach this kz krila to something which is relatively brighter sounding it will kind of a bit appearing lean and dry but it will fare better if you attach to something which is relatively natively rich sounding especially like this uh, fc6 here or even this pcmd 100 or even Burson audio playmate 2 
uh, my reference deck M, which you are not seeing on the video right now. Okay. The resolution itself, I would definitely consider this being analytical and transparent. There's a good uh, element of neutrality to it. What I'm hearing is that a faithful reproduction of the sound with good detail, macro and micro detail. Looking at dynamic presentation, this Kezi Krila is something which I would consider as being energetic and crisp sounding in conjunction with the analytical and transparent tuning, which I have noted earlier. And when we look at the dynamic upper frequency, I would say that, you know, this Krila offer clips extension with good decays. And of course, it has good amount of sparkle and can be considered slightly on the brighter side. Okay. When it comes to mid range, it is neutral, does not exhibit any kind of coloration, slightly recessed with the staging itself. So, for example, when I listen to female vocal or even instruments or even male vocal, they sounded correct to my ears. Moving on to the lower frequency, this Kezi Krila is something which I would consider as being mildly punchy. It is fast, it is crisp, right, with the decay itself. And the best part is that the balance between sub bass and mid bass is very well tuned. Okay, so you're not hearing any kind of dominance of sub bass or mid bass in that particular order. And you have to remember, it also depends on which switches you have set. So if you turn on switch number one and number two, chances are you, that you're going to get more bass. Moving on to the technical aspect of it, the most prominent being sound stage. This KZ Krila offer wide open sounding, not exactly very wide, not exactly narrow as well. It is in fact pretty much similar to KZ DFI, which I have reviewed earlier. And when it comes to the projection of sound itself, it is holographic to a point that I was able to use it for gaming and good for binaural music. Next, KZ Castor. This uh, KZ Castor Harman version, the tuning switch which I have set identical to what I have set on this uh, KZ Krila, which means that it is off, off, off and on, only number four being turned on because I always prefer not to boost the lower frequency. Power-wise, this castor is also easy to drive, already sounding great with my phone here under 1VRMS, and it scales better with more power. And when we talk about the sound itself, the note width of this castor is, it is something which I consider being rich and smooth sounding. It is pleasant, in fact. And resolution-wise, fairly analytical, despite being colored, Yes, there's no transparency on this uh, KZ Castor because the Harman tuning itself tend to suppress quite a bit of mid-range and adjust a bit of uh, lower frequency. So even though it is analytical, I consider it being highly colored. So when you talk about dynamic energy, this is definitely energetic. It is vibrant and the best part is it is also mature sounding. Again, in tandem with what I have mentioned earlier, the smoothness to the entirety of the dynamic presentation itself. So talking about dynamic upper frequency. So one thing first, all right, even when set at the deep switch, which emphasize on upper frequency, this castor being Harman tune exhibit something which I consider as being a safe tune when it comes to upper frequency, there's still sparkle and there's still air and energy to it. And the keyword here is that Despite not being treble heavy, it has good amount of air to the treble presentation. So I can live with that. Okay. And when it comes to mid range, this is definitely something which I consider as being colored, especially when uh, subjected to listening to certain type of female vocal like Diana Kroll. I feel that the vocal itself being warm, not neutral, but it is pleasant, right? The kind of sound which you enjoy listening to. And when subjected to listening to soprano, it is less peaky on the upper mid range. Okay, so, and talking about the lower frequency, perhaps this is the attraction why you want to get KZ Castor. Again, as I mentioned earlier, this is Arman tune. Even the non bass version is something which I consider as heavier on the bass presentation itself. And I have to switch off everything on the lower frequency in order to get a bit of balance so that it will not be so colored in the lower frequency. The sound stage, fairly wide open sounding, right? In fact, I think it is slightly wider sounding as compared to KZ Krila, okay? So, and uh, another surprising element is that, you know, 
this thing is also very holographic when it comes to spatial projection. And now, KZAS24, 12 balance amateur inside this thing, this whole assembly, all crammed inside, okay? And this is a non-tunable version, so there's no deep switches here. It has a fixed tuning. Driving this AS24 is super, super easy. I was already getting quite a lot of wholesome sound coming from my Sony Xperia phone here, which is one VRMS or even less. And I might even say that this KZ AS24, don't try to put it at anything above four VRMS because it will exhibit audible distortion, which my ear is telling me, okay, it does not behave really well with huge amount of power, especially anything above 4 VRMS or anything above 250 milliwatt of power. And when it comes to the sound itself, I would consider that AS24 much similar to KZ Castor being rich and dense. It is one of the richest sounding among all three of them. And when it comes to the resolution itself, it is fairly analytical and colored. All right. There's not much of transparency that I can feel getting from this AS24 as compared to the Krilla. When it comes to dynamic energy itself, you see that? My note, it's party time. This thing is euphonic. <laughs> if you love vibrant, energetic sound, this is one of the IEM which I consider as being euphonic. And looking at the dynamic energy, let's talk about the upper frequency. Now, this is where some of the issues which I like to highlight. I think the amount of driver being crammed into this thing, this AS24 is having a bit of issue with coherency. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is that on certain track, on some of the track which I have subjected it to, complex sounding track, uh, there's a bit of struggle trying to maintain the dynamic flow between the mid-range, upper mid-range to the upper treble. Okay, so I am hearing even some sort of a grainy edge decays or even some rough spot which I would consider as being full of artifact. So not really looking good on this AS24 when it comes to the upper frequency performance. So when it comes to mid-range, it is mildly colored, all right? It is rich and warm sounding. So if you like your mid-range being warm, AS24 have it, okay? So when it comes to the lower frequency, again, similar to the upper frequency, it lack coherency. Somewhat, you know, woolly on some, some track. So meaning to say that there's a disconnection between the sub bass and mid bass. I feel that there's some sort of hollowness or even loose performance there. But it is not consistent. It depends on how bassy the track is. And it depends also whether it's electronic or instrumental you know, percussion bass. So with electronic bass, perhaps it is okay. But with some very fast you know, track, percussion bass which require a bit of coherency between mid bass and sub bass this thing struggle despite being having 12 balance amateur crammed into this one single assembly here surprisingly i have found that the sound stage to be average at best with the width itself not exactly wide sounding but at least it is tall and when it comes to the presentation of the spatial imaging and everything it is holographic which is a good thing expected from multiple driver it is suitable for gaming or even listening to binaural type of music all three of them set side by side compared and rated according to Andy Odevort rating system so you can clearly see there that KZ Krila and KZ Castor Harman version scored really well above 80 for both of them on the overall score I can only reflect on what I have heard my own experience and this is how it looked like so let's just touch a bit more on this KZ Krila here you would want to have KZ Krila if you prefer something which is neutral and uncolored with the tunability of a bit more of flavoring here and there but in general I would consider KZ Krila being the most transparent and neutral among all three of them however you would want to have KZ Castor if you are a fan of Harman sort of tuning which means that you prefer a bit more of sub bass, you prefer a bit more of relaxed mid range, and you prefer a bit more of relaxed upper frequency. Smoothness is the biggest offering coming from this KZ Castor among all three of them. It is quite pleasant to use, okay? And this AS24, well, 
I don't have anything much to say about it because I think there's a lot of issue with coherency on this particular model. Okay, it only shows that it is not easy to tune and implement multiple driver IM, and it is my personal belief that more driver does not necessarily mean better quality. And before I conclude, a bit more of comparison with the rest of the competition available in the market right now, starting with this KZ Krila. KZ Krila, as I already mentioned earlier, competes directly with KZ DFI. If you are already an owner of KZ DFI, you probably want to skip this KZ Krila altogether because you're not getting any kind of difference by any margin at all. At least that's from my perspective. This KZ Krila competes one-to-one -one with the likes of Moondrop 2 or even uh, Atimotic ER2XR type of territory, okay? And where else this KZ Castor here, it competes directly with Moondrop Aria. I would even dare say that if you would want to have Moondrop variation sort of tuning, Moondrop variation sort of sound, KZ Castor would be able to give you that at much lower price. And nothing much again, to be said about this KZ AS24. If you like multiple driver and for whatever reason you find that you always want to have multiple driver, it is quite suitable for gaming.